In this video, we'll be discussing the primary clinical markers of primary pain syndrome. And those include a whole spectrum of manifestations that the body has. It's prudent in the diagnosis of primary pain that you rule out secondary causes. Now you could have secondary causes that initiated primary pain that I've either healed on its own or you've taken care of them through pharmacological or interventional, even surgical type of management, but the pain persists. That's important part of the primary pain diagnosis. So we talk about the FIT criteria, functional, inconsistent, and or triggered. So functional means that the symptoms started without a physical injury, so in the absence of an injury or a structural condition, or they persist after an injury has healed. Injuries heal. And when we see pain staying the same or even increasing over time after an injury is healed, whether it's a fracture or a soft tissue injury or whatever, that is strongly suggestive of primary pain. There's almost certainly a neuroplastic component or a brain component. Uh, in other words, the brain is at least augmenting a signal, if not actually completely just creating uh, the pain signal. They tend to have a symmetrical distribution or they affect one whole side of the body. Uh, pain that's all over the body and particularly pain that's bilateral. There are certain conditions, of course, diabetic neuropathy, which can have bilateral uh, pain syndromes. But in the absence of that, people often with bilateral pain syndromes, it's often functional or primary. They have this quality of being like tingling or electricity, burning, numb, hot or cold. And they can occur in many different parts of the body at the same time. The second major factor or clue is inconsistency. They are minimal or non-existent when the person is distracted or engaged in a joyful or fun activity or while on vacation, for example. When it shifts, when it moves, when it's sometime in one part of the back and other times in other parts of the back, or it's in the neck, but now it's in the back, or it's in different parts of the limb. They are more or less intense depending on the time of the day or on the day of the week. Uh, you know, if I break my bone and before it's got set, every time I take a step, my tibia moves a little bit, that's going to hurt like heck every single step I take. So pain that fluctuates and is bad and then goes away and comes back. Triggered means that the pain or the symptoms are triggered by things unrelated to the symptom. Pain that's triggered by light or sound or computer screens or cold or heat or weather. Anticipation of stress or during stressful activities or anticipation of something that the person believes is going to make the pain worse. So for instance, sitting in a certain chair if the person is experiencing back pain. Also by light touch or a harmless stimuli, such as wind or cold. And there can be an improvement after receiving some form of therapy that the person believes is going to help, such as Reiki, acupuncture, some sort of manual therapy, chiropractic, um, even supplements, for instance. All of a sudden, the pain goes away for an extended period of time, or even for a relatively short time. That, again, suggests that the brain is the driver of this pain. The FIT criteria is important for validating a diagnosis for chronic primary pain because it differentiates physical and other secondary causes from primary causes. And it also links in individuals' behaviors, stress, and tolerance to their pain environment. In medicine, it's fundamental to have the correct diagnosis because as we all know, that guides proper medication, pharmacological and other interventional management for our patients. Unfortunately, with primary pain, just because it's more recently recognized through evolving science, literature, evidence-based practice, and now into the ICD-11 criteria, unfortunately, patients have been left behind and either have mistrust of the healthcare system, gone through trials that did not directly address the pathophysiology of their condition. It's a new awakening in the era of pain management in that we correctly diagnose these patients so we could offer them targeted interventions. Problems in the nervous system and in the brain, and these people have had so many treatments and aren't getting better. And now you're on the path to explaining this to patients with compassion and kindness 
letting them know it's not all in their head. It's real pain and it's caused by their brain and therefore it's reversible. <laughs>